Oh, hey guys, Dan here, DSB Chop. Um, today, we're working on nothing in this garage. Weird, right? It's actually raining out, so I just jammed the Cobra in here because I was too lazy to cover it. But I'll give you a little update on these things. So, the past few videos have been focused on these two cars. This one here kept freaking leaking. I don't know what I did with it. I did clean up in here and stuff. It's actually looking pretty nice now. Um, the TV cable was leaking. I thought I fixed it. It had a crack in it, right? The, you know, where it goes into the transmission. So as it turns out, I didn't fix it. I need a new one. So I put one of those in there and now it seems like it's A-OK. -okay. Um, didn't really want to go to overdrive so you're really moving. It might just be kind of how it is or maybe I need a little adjustment. I'm not really too sure, but I was really easy on it. So I'm not really too concerned about it. People are asking about these 700R4 TV cables. They're very sensitive. They're not a kickdown cable. They're a throttle, valve, pressure, all sorts of stuff. So you want to make sure they're right. So I will take my time and make sure that's uh, decently accurate. But basically ready to go. I have an appointment next week to get tailpipes put on it because I do want the exhaust running right at the back. Right now I always have dumps at the rear end. And I kind of think that's all it really needs. We'll have to uh, get, you know, have the man put the rubber stamp, make sure it's all legitimate. But I think we're pretty good. I don't know how I'm going to do with it. People have been offering they want to buy it and stuff like that. Unfortunately, I actually have a lot of time and money into it. I don't know what the heck it's worth. And once it's gone, it's gone. So I don't know what I'm going to do with it. But we're, it's finished. Finished enough. Cobra. This thing, I have driven this thing to work every day this week. Got caught in the rain once. I put a different set of tires on it. I put narrower tires on it. This thing used to dart all over the road. I covered that in the last video, but it drives so nice. Um, our seat... Being a lawn chair, works good, beat the hell out of it, snacks, life's good. Anyway, so there you are. I mean, I know we're darting all over the place project to project here, but it's summertime. We're getting stuff done. We're getting stuff on the road. Today, remember this thing? 64 Chevy 2, everyone thought I overpaid for, which I easily may have. So this thing I bought in, I want to say May... Or maybe even before that, April. Anyways, um, I want to get this together. I got because I got another project has to come home. You know, you got to keep the cycle going. So where we left this thing, we had done floor patches, we done some trunk work, we put the interior back in, just kind of odds and ends. It had a real rough quarter panel. We'd straighten that out, straighten it out. I have a bumper for it. Uh, this is the bumper that came off. It's all twisted up. I think. Oh, and that bumper right there is the one we're going to put on. It's in better shape. I picked up a, well, that box right there. We see it. That has a good used fuel tank, supposedly, in it. So we got that. We got the windshield in. I got the back glass. I ordered the rubber. It's still not here. It's actually driving me crazy. I should have been here by now, but I want to put that in and really just get this thing running and driving. I have all the trim nicely stored here. It's pretty beat up and rough, but we're going to, you know, get Mer, you know, the retirees, you got to keep them employed, eh? So he'll straighten those out, see if we can kind of put it back on, maybe blend in a little paint, polish a few things up here and there, do whatever we got to do. It's just a straight six with a turbo 350. Um, I put a ratchet shifter in there. We're just going to get it running and driving down the road. Um, again, you know, get, get plates on it, all those sort of things. Danny talks like she wants a race car. Danny talks a lot. For whatever reason in her mind, after Power Tour, she was talking to Alex Taylor and decided she wants a drag and drive car. Which I was like, I'm not into racing. She's not into racing. We'd have nothing fast, but whatever. I showed her pictures of these things. Nose high gasser, and she was into it. So I have a... I've said it before, but... I saw the 327. That transmission, maybe? Anyways, we have a couple of rebuilt Turbo 350s with a... So we got this thing all apart. Unfortunately, it's kind of dark in here. Huh? Two lights, phone light. Um, everything actually looked pretty good. So the brakes at some point, I believe, have been done because the springs and all that are still have color on them. Now what I will do, 
is put a wheel cylinder in it because they just leak. They will, no matter what. In my, my experience, we'll repack the bearing. The drum actually looks not bad, so like you can usually feel just at the edge if it's got a little ridge, like a lip. Because what happens is the shoe obviously is breaking in the drum while it's not right on the edge. Ah! And you can see here, where's a little wear mark? Just hang on, hang on. Right there, it's got some rust on it. Now it's rusty, but it's flat. So, which leads me to think either these have been turned, which is fine, or they're still in uh, spec. Now I do have a brake drum measuring tool. I don't know where it is, but I'll, I'll measure that up and just see if they're decent. There's a lot of material left on the shoes. I think this thing went through a minor restoration, you know, 20 years ago or something like that. I mean, the interior's obviously been done, not factory. The motor that's in it is a later model, it's a blue block, HEI kind of deal, you know. Um, on this front end here, the ball joints are bolted in. Now I assume, I mean, I don't know, I've never worked on these before. Typically all the factory ones are riveted, so I assume those have been done. Now here's the, the real issue that we're working with, the problem. Let's see this or not, but the upper control arm bushing is completely sacked out. See that side? has some rubber and this side has a nun so what has happened this rubber or the whole bushing side is wore out so the cross shaft is bolted to the car and it's straight what's happening is this can now pivot because there's no bushing to hold it which is throwing our wheel out to lunch there ain't much you can do about that no other than replacing it now further to that i've never done this but i'm believing i'm going to need some sort of a spring compressor to take this uh, coil spring out which i do not have and it's already late now we have a lot of the stuff again everything just looks kind of a nice shape but we'll price things out because we can do a set of outer tie rods because we already have them this little steering there's two bushings in there we can get that taken care of there's a strut rod on the front which runs up there, and there's a little rubber bushing in that. Those will probably be cheap. We could price those out, a set of shocks. Like I said, a, uh, a wheel cylinder. We should be able to kind of get a bunch of stuff. So I think what I'll probably do, especially if I'm gonna have to collapse that spring, I might as well just get everything I need. Collapse the spring, take it out, leave it on the ground, put everything new in, because this stuff should just bolt right in, and then uh, put the spring back in and kind of carry on. So a bit of a lazy night, didn't really do a whole lot. Probably should have done this weeks ago, inspected what I needed, made an order, got all the stuff. But, hey, what are you going to do? It's really not that complicated. We should be able to put it back together. Every video I've ever seen on this, or on these Chevy 2s, is everyone's just like, chop the front end off, put, strut in, uh, put the strut on. Or like a gas surge kind of thing, which we may do. But like I said, let's get this thing on the road. Let's put a few test miles on it. Well, I guess I could have put the light on high beam too. Look at that. There's two more speeds. Hey, look at this. It's really not in that bad of shape. Honestly... I mean, depending where you are and what you have for parts, I think those two bushings right there, crack brake line and set of upper control arm bushings, you'd be set. But taking it all the way apart, you might as well clean it and do all that stuff. Or if you're a Facebook marketplace connoisseur, and these are like brand new crossbars and everything. Somebody spent money. But yeah. I will see you guys tomorrow after work, hopefully with all the tools and parts we need, and we'll uh, rip it apart and put it back together. Fun times. Oh, I should probably get a master cylinder too while we're at it, eh? Put that on my phone. New day, and things didn't go my way at the parts store. They had not one thing. Not one thing in stock. Any locations, you know, kind of called around. I shouldn't say that. They did have a brake master cylinder in stock, and it was $150. For a single pot master which is 40 on rock auto and this one still works now this is where i get i like to say i do budget ish builds and stuff like that and what i really appreciate doing and i like to do is when it's all coming apart i just put like new front ends on new brakes just because you know you're already in there it's not usually that much more money if you're going to do the upper ball joints, why would you not do the lowers? If you're going to do some control arm bushings, why would you not do the lowers? Or whatever it was, you know what I mean? And uh, at this point with what I have, I thought it's a few more bushings, uh, a few, like uh, you know, very minor things, might as well do it. Well, that's not the case. So 
There is actually a guy who reached out a while ago and said he had a bunch of stuff. And I always feel guilty when people reach out, so we'll see if I can maybe... I sent him a message, maybe I can buy some stuff off from wherever you want to give it all to me, but... Uh, that's not reality for most people, so why should it be for me? This is all stuff I bought. So, we're going to start putting this together. Now, the only thing that was in stock at the House of Murr was his... Uh, spring compressors which I borrowed for McPherson struts oh I bought a bunch of oil and oh, I, I got some valve covers <sighs> hang on it's worth the wait I promise Damn it. big block Chevy Morosos they're kind of like uh, daisy wheels you see them you just buy them right so we have our spring compressors um, I'm gonna change where I have the car jacked up it's on suspension right now so we'll put it on the subframe I'll take apart this little kind of cover on the coil spring. I've never done this before, but at the end of the day, if the coil spring is compressed and out, you can't get hurt. So work smarter or safety, work safetier. So we'll get all set up. We'll come back and hopefully this will come out uh, easily. So this is the piece. It's off. It was nut and bolted, which is kind of a bit pain, a bit of a pain, I should say, to get over. Um, at the top, we had the shock that ran through here and the little kind of top brace, which had one one stud had to zip off, which I'll show you after. But anyways, we're at the critical death point. Now, these are murders, so, you know, he, he loaned me so I wouldn't kill myself here. Um, it's pretty good. They have little locks on them to hold them all together. Uh, I don't know if there's an up or a down to use them, but I did them this way. I put this one on, and I put this one on. I was like, oh, I'm going to run out of threads and end up into the body. Now, there really isn't a whole lot of tension on this spring now, uh, but obviously you do have to compress it. It's just sitting on, I believe, this little pocket here, which is only held on with kind of a couple of little bolts, or decent-sized bolts, I should say. But the new control arms don't have that, so we do have to remove this piece and put it on the new one. I think what we'll probably do, we're going to take a spring out, obviously, and then we'll just do kind of one piece at a time. Upper control arm, lower control arm, and then uh, kind of put it all back together. And we'll still have the used stuff on it here and there, but it's the way she goes. And then after, if we want to change this strut rod, you know, the bushing or whatever we want in the steering, we can do that after. And like these things, they're pretty chewed, but I, mean, I don't know, there's not a whole lot of play in them. So they're fine for what we're doing, I guess, but... For the eight bucks, if you can find them, I'd, uh, I'd have changed them. So let's set this camera up and watch in fast motion me, uh, you know, pee my pants a little bit. I hate coil springs. Just I, I don't like the danger. Oh, all right. It's like handling a bomb, no big deal. Just put that over there. So now you can see what we're working with. Very simple. So there's this little cup that kind of holds in there. And obviously this is what the spring kind of sets in. Um, this is where the bolts go through or whatever it is that hold a little shock tower for the uh, for the, the, the shock, well shock I guess, shock tower. Um, so one was bust, I had to cut it out. This is our little thing here. Now obviously, because everything, still in good shape, the upper, everything rides on the upper control arm on this step. I mean, typically, on I mean, most of the stuff we work on, the pocket would be in the frame itself, and then that, the spring is in there and it's pushing down on the lower control arm. So all the weights on the lower control arm and the upper is just a follower. In this case, it's the other way. All the pressure is on the upper control arm and that's kind of that. Now, everything just kind of, oh yeah, you can see how much unhappiness there is. Ugh. I'm gonna get my bar here in this front con control arm. There's a bunch of junky play in it, so. We'll take that out. I believe there's just a couple of bolts that go through. So I'll probably break this upper control arm up, 
that'll then just leave everything down here. We can change that, put it back in, bolt it down, take the lower out, and repeat the process on the other side. Fairly simple. I hose everything down. I mean, if I screw this line up, it's not the end of the world to make a new one there. Unfortunately, I just... That was loud. I didn't have... Uh, they didn't have brake lines, which would have been nice. Brake lines. They did have, actually, wheel cylinders, too. I think they were, like... $40 a wheel cylinder and $150 for at the master, like I said. And on Rock Auto, they're $8 a wheel cylinder and $40 or $50 for the master. So that's even with shipping being expensive, too rich for me. So I'm going to see how this works. And we'll uh, take this guy apart. Okay, so I figured I'd just show you before I take this all apart. But the upper control arm, or the uh, ball joint, I should say. Yeah, that's not good. She wore out, and then the lower control arm, the bushing in there is like, it should have a little play, but uh, not infinitely adjustable. So obviously that is also a sacked out. So we'll take the, uh, take the spindle off, or just kind of hang it or do something, and then we'll uh, get to these control arms. So, Here's our upper control arm out. It just has two bolts that goes into the front end. I don't know. Anyways, you can see, damn it, you can see here how this cross shaft is just absolutely sacked out. Like it's for one. You can see how this one washer is pushed way uh way far forward or however you want to look at it. Well, that's not right. Obviously, if you look in here, she's all she's all kinds of not good. Now we take the brand used one and you can see what I'm talking about. Everything is kind of straight and does its thing. Everything is centered yeah, and we should be all good. Um, again, new ball joints, everything should be, well, gonna be perfect. This this front end sacked out, but someone's done brakes on it at some point. So this thing would have drove atrociously. Now these are all things which are, Unfortunately, kind of time consuming, and I think a lot of people overlook. And, you know, I, I'm a hack in a lot of ways, don't get me wrong. But a good front end and good brakes is just smart. I mean, it's not a lot of money. It's a little bit of screwing around for sure. But this is something you will absolutely know, and this will absolutely drive like it's a brand new car. So do that. Um, I'm going to take this off, wire wheel it real quick just so it looks kind of presentable ish. Bolt it on here. We'll slap that and we'll have to reuse uh, one of the bolts. These are probably splined or something in there. Well, maybe not. But we'll knock one out with a hammer, put it in, shunk, put it in, bolt it in, we're good. Here's two bolts that hold this top piece all together. They're like carriage bolts, I guess. So it's kind of a dumb design. And they're just held in with that little, uh, that plate kind of, I guess. Uh, it's pretty dumb. I'm not, not, not a huge fan of it. Um, We'll have to see what the deal is. I don't know if I'll put this back together or not because the shocks are probably junk, but I will have to put in the studs. Yeah, I'll be able to put those studs in. Uh, let's get to work on this. Put it all back together. So I jumped ahead slightly. Um, the new controller was there, but I have to pull a stud in and my impact gun was dead. So the battery's charging on that. I also smacked my finger, that hurt. Um, we've got the lower control arm off. It's very simple. There's just one bolt. Um, and look at, that's not, that's not good. That's what it's supposed to look like for the bottom bushing. Obviously our new ball joint. These are left and right. They have steering stops on them. You can see here, this is where the strut arm went. So what I'm saying strut arm, basically your lower control arm is like that. Well, typically it has to be like an A-frame or something like that. So the strut arm just kind of goes like that and gives it the, the back and forth structure. And at the end, it's just, a, it's just a rod. And at the end, there's two little bushings. So I have it just sitting on here yet. Oh, old man E-crack right there where the light is on. Uh, we'll probably take it off because at the front just has a couple of bushings which we don't have. We'll have to order or track down or whatever. But uh, we can take it out and it, it goes in very simple after the fact. So we can do that. Um, oh yeah, so this, the way this all works, ugh, so it has these. So the bolt that goes through has this kind of offset washer and it's flat on one side. So what you do is you can loosen it and you roll this one way or the other and that will move in or out the lower control arm and adjust your suspension. Now we do have 
new ones in the bag. So that's pretty slick. We'll put uh, the lower control arm going very quick and very easy. And then we can uh, hopefully pull in that top stud. It was splined and tight and hard and I did the torch out and like, it was quite an operation. But I'd like to get that all kind of back together just so it's sitting there that we can work on the other side and then really know where to leave this. I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to track down more parts. It'd be nice to do it all at once, but we may have to just kind of put it back together and leave it up on stands. And I mean, there's lots more to do in this. We gotta get on the back and do the welding of the quarters and stuff. So maybe we'll just kind of do the front suspension. We do what we do, pack the wheel bearings and order parts. So we'll get this all back together. I think I might take a short break, ice my fingy, cause it's a hurting and uh, yeah, keep going. Still lots of daylight left. Well, jumped ahead just a little bit, man. I whacked my finger, something fierce. The whole, my whole finger hurts. Anyway, I put some new hardware in here. It's all just kind of loose, honestly, because the shock is going to have to come out. I didn't bolt it at the bottom, but when I put the spring in, I thought, you know what? If I have the shock in there, if the spring wants to go a cattywampus, there's just more to hold it in. So that was a win. Um, I struggled. I couldn't get the one. So these friggin' bolts are splined in here and they're 716 spine thread, all for the most part, suspension stuff is that. I struggled, struggled, struggled. I couldn't do it. I had some just 716s hardware. This is a longer bolt than I need, but I just put one of those in there. It's fine. It'll hold it for now. And if I want to put like grade eight fine stuff in, but let's be honest, the goal with this thing is get on the road, see if Danny likes it. And if she does, everything's coming off. So I don't want to spend a pile of money on this thing if I don't have to, but to get on the road and drive it, you have to get the stupid inspection. You have to have good brakes. It's just this whole thing. So if you can just title a car and drive it wherever you are, be thankful. Um, anyway, so we have this all kind of dialed. Now let's get under here real quick. Let's see what we're working with. So I put the spring back in. Uh, reverse will change over what we already did. Very simple. Everything just kind of went together. Obviously spindle and whatnot is in. Now, what I do want to show you is how these lower control arms work. And the lighting situation is not ideal. But if we put a, so I have it kind of in the neutral-ish position, but if we move this, you can see how the control arm, hopefully anyways, will move in and out. I'm sure see it out here. Changes everything. So that is what's gonna change your suspension, camber and whatnot. So we'll set that back to the neutral position. This is that strut rod I was talking about. <clears throat> That's the bushing. She's had better days, but it is what it is. So I just hose it down with WD-40. It's literally two bolts and that can come out and then uh, put new bushings in and we're golden. That's what keeps it, you know, gives us a little bit of uh, sturdiness. Uh, otherwise in here, we have our bushing. So I've left those loose. What you want to do is run those nuts in tight when there's loaded on the suspension in the neutral position and kind of hold it. Again, the shock just kind of sitting there. We got to get a new one of them brake glide no bueno but otherwise i mean it's it is what it is realistically we got the suspension taken care of i pulled the one cap off uh there's lots of grease in there there's no no play in the wheel bearing so we're going to call that good we're going to go ahead and just clean everything out with some brake clean and assume the brakes are good they have lots of meat there everything looks new ish and uh, we're just going to hope the wheel cylinders don't leak and then really what we'll have to do in a future video is we'll go through the suspension or the steering sorry just I don't know. The idea of new steering for uh, for a few bucks. These bushings are not cheap or not expensive, but they're not available. So I can check a few more places tomorrow maybe, but realistically, order them online. They'll be here in a week. We already have the two, the outer inner tie rod end. Jeez, I'm losing the inner and the adjuster sleeve. The outers, unfortunately, are like 25 or 30 bucks on Rock Auto. They have this little whoop de doo in them, but at that point, I think I'm gonna do it for hundred bucks right now. Set of bushings, another hundred bucks or two hundred dollars in. Probably not the end of the world. And then if Danny wants to drive it like this for a while, there's no rush to change it, or who knows. Or if she doesn't like it, then I can sell it down the road. And I'm not gonna feel bad about the front end being all cattywampus. So I gotta get this battery in the this thing recharged, and then or switch lights, I guess. I think I'm just gonna leave it like this, and we'll start working on the other side. So it'll be a front suspension video. After that, we'll start working on the quarters. And I know how to live.
Friday nights at Evie Speed Shop are a good time. Okay, so another similar situation. Doesn't look like the lower bulb or bushing is nearly as sacked out. The uppers are definitely seen better days. I got the little cover off and I pulled the shock out. That's all I've done. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's more of the same. So I'm gonna set the camera up. We'll turn on the hyperlapse. So this will only take you a matter of minutes or under a minute for me to get all this work done. Meanwhile, it'll take me a bunch of scooting around. Good times. Man, I love the internet. I wish I could be on your guys' side sometimes, but uh, you know, I feel like when I watch YouTube, I don't get as much done at home. I appreciate you guys watching though. Full speed. <laughs> Okay, so, I knocked the camera over, sorry guys. I had to get the uh, studs out for the upper control arm and there's a bunch of like vacuum and junk like that in the way so I couldn't use a socket, it was all wrench work, that was terrible. But uh, it should just come right out. The lower bolt on this control arm is not happening so we're gonna have to get the torch out. Never uh, hang your spindle by the brake line unless you're replacing the brake line. So tech tip for the day. This one's not nearly as bad. I mean, it's, you know, that's fine. But while we're here, we might as well make it happen. Um, take this off wire wheel it real quick. Bolt it to the new control arm. Put it all back in, but first we have the torch because if we're doing a fire, we want to do it now so we have as much time to watch it after. And it's getting dark out, so it's getting near my bedtime. Cars on the tables two days later. Uh, my buddy Josh came over and we actually went and did a metalworking class at uh, Half Ass's place with uh, Make It Custom. And next thing you know, it's uh, two days later. So, where I left it was the brakes were exactly apart. Spring is still in danger mode. But I think I had to get the torches out. I think that's where we were. I gotta get this lower control arm out and start bolting all that together. These things are weird. The uh, grease fitting is there on these ball joints, but. I guess any fitting is better than no fitting, right? So we'll get the torch set up and start going like it's two days ago. Rip it apart, put it back together, drop it down. Color, kind of a day. Then I think it's, well, we'll jack the back end up and we'll start working on core pals, even in the next video. I have a pretty good life, you know, just working on junk all the time, it never seems to end. So the plan goes as follows. We're gonna try and heat up this nut. Unfortunately, what I'm sure is probably gonna happen the bolt that goes through sometimes can get stuck on the uh, the bushing and stuff like that. So it may be ugly coming out, but you know, a little bit of heat, that'll fix everything, right? The other side was obviously completely butchered up, which actually was uh, bad for driving, but yeah, nice to remove it. Ah, the hammer. Okay, I'm gonna do this. Try not to burn the car down. It's a pantry while sitting on there for a couple of days. A little too crazy with the, the flame there, but I feel like just a little bit of red hot is always all you need. Gentle, gentle. Hopefully, so all just kind of come apart. So again, this nut comes off. I think just knock it straight back with the hammer. We have new hardware, so I'm not really too concerned about nothing. No, let's just take it too long. Let's give it a little bit more of this. There we go. 
nice and, you know, well done, I guess. You don't have a set of torches. You don't use them all the time, but my god. When you need them, they are handy. What are we doing here? I guess I should have been a little bit more prepared, but... Gentle, gentle. Got this on here. Is this gonna fit? Of course not. Don't touch the hot part. What the... This is embarrassing. Not really. That's on there enough. There, let's see what happens here. Put the wobble socket on. So when you're doing this, you want to kind of go work it back and forth. You go all the way full throttle out, nine times out of ten it'll break. But if you kind of work it back and forth, get some of the dirt out of the threads, you're golden. Okay, don't touch that, it'll be hot. I think it's come out. Absolutely not. Well, we'll see if we can heat it up and uh, work that back and forth a little bit with a wrench. So we get it to spin, we'll be doing okay. If we get it to spin. I need that socket, but it's gonna be hot now, so we'll give it a minute. So everything's all apart. Um, I ended up just getting a larger hammer and a pry bar. We got it out. Now, what happens is, this is still just a little bit warm. This bushing is, is in way better shape than the other side. It's probably could have just been used. It's all melted because I uh, put a bunch of heat to it, but honestly probably could have continued to use it. But why would you at this point? Um, anyway, how's this? Is this too hot to touch? Eh, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Huh? So what happens is, this section right here of the bolt, get rid of that, rides inside this metal sleeve, the inside the metal sleeve of the bushing, and they end up kind of rusting together. So, which is irrelevant when it's in the car because it's all tight and all the, like the bushing, obviously the rubber is doing all the, what it's supposed to do. But when the bushing is rusted to the bolt, the bolt does not want to come out, which is a hassle, but in this case we kind of lucked out. Now what you can do is if it's ever caught in there, it would be sitting just like that with the bolt running through it. You can just get a sawzall in there, shunk, shunk, cut that out. It'll be stuck in there, which is irrelevant, and you can just knock it out of the car and you're fine. That's the same for like leaf springs or kind of stuff like that. I've done that many times. Try five leaf springs, the bolt's not coming out. Just run a sawzall down both sides. Make sure you don't hack up the perch or in this case, like the, whatever, the, the lower cross member area, or the control arm if you're replacing the bushings and reusing the existing cross member, because that'll be a big hassle, just cut the bolt, you're fine. No problems. So we'll take this, uh, well, dump it somewhere, and we'll put the other ones on, very simple, nut and bolt, and then we'll start compressing that spring, put it all back together, we should have this thing back down on the ground, shortly-ish, and hopefully the wheel spacing will be uh, much better. And we can actually, you know, drive this thing a little bit and kind of do stuff like that. Uh, I haven't done any ordering of the other parts yet. I've been, like I said, I've been busy doing other things. But we can get steering at any time. I think, unfortunately, I actually did check the bushings on the uh, center link and all that. And they were no bueno on Rock Auto. So that's not good for me. Oh, well. All right. This side is all back together. we got to put the little covers on, which we will do uh, right away here. But, you know, I just hit the... The brakes with the brake clean, it's all mint, nice, clean, no issues there. We got to track down a few bits, but overall we're making some progress. Now, unfortunately, or fortunately, I guess we'll, we'll just see how it goes. Anyways, I was going through the 57 and I found my uh, drum brake measuring tool. So it's basically just a set of calipers, which, uh, oh, maybe I should read, whoops, scratch to the paint. So all it is, is uh, your measuring is here to here, and this just sits on top of the drum. So you turn it on, and you can auto set it for drum, which maybe I did it wrong here. So you close that up. So those are touching, you hit the drum. So it's four inches, because here to here is four inches. These drums are 
Brand new nine and a half inches 60 tile wear is disposal. So hopefully I may have just set this up wrong off camera and they'll still be in spec. It's a little pain here to do. Gentle, gentle. Okay. No, they're junk. So you want to put those around and kind of work it away. So well, that's showing up. 950 is uh, in spec. That would be brand new. And then 956 would be 60 thou, which would be uh, wore out. And these are 959. So they junk, which is a bummer. They obviously, they've been turned a bunch of times or something along those lines. And I got to buy some new ones, which kind of sucks. Now, the issue we run into is because if we do decide to put a gas or run on this thing and all that, you're just throwing money out the door. But I kind of like to drive a little bit, make sure Danny likes it before you spend that kind of money. So you spend, you know, a couple hundred bucks on drums. I don't know what the backs are like. So that, that may be part of it. Shipping is a real issue if we got to buy back drums anyways, in for a penny and for a pound. And there was a guy locally that had some stuff. I can try and track some down. Maybe his are in decent shape. Never know. But... Again, skimping on brakes, I shouldn't even say it out loud that I'm, I'm mad about it because brakes are pretty important, Sus steering's important, you know, suspension's important. So if it's no good, it's no good. So at some point, somebody has just changed the pads on this thing or changed the shoes and, and carried on. So we're going to put it back on just so we have brakes on this, but mental note, not great. Um, in the next video, when we lift this thing up and we start working on the back, we'll pull the wheels and maybe go through the back brakes as well. If we have to make an order of parts, we might as well do it all at once. Save on some shipping and then just have stuff sitting around, right? So uh, I'll put those covers back on, kind of put it all back together, button it up. We'll go from there. Uh, I was just gonna put this thing down and uh, I was looking, we, we may have some aggressive uh, camera in there. Maybe it'll figure itself out. Um, so it's all kind of bolted back together. We put the little splash band pieces in there. Shocks are just sitting in there, but uh, the actual suspension part of it, like the uh, control arms, spring all that that's not coming out again it'll just be simple stuff which we can do without any danger right uh while i was under here i've never really worked on these before so i'm not sure 100 percent everything bolts on but i mean there's a couple bolts at the top here uh there and there which i guess hold on the apron which i don't know if that's part of the structure and then there's a couple of big bolts there and there so i think that's kind of it like two at the bottom two at the top maybe and this whole piece comes apart and then i don't know what the deal is with like subframe connectors and everything but it looks like a pretty easy job i gotta say on all the videos i've watched they take it apart like instantly so i mean let's be honest tv is always honest so it must just be easy now let's drop this thing down and see oh, left hand stupid left hand it's hard to gauge her you know if the wheel fits a little more evenly Oh, actually, when you drop it down, the camera goes away. Who'd have thought, eh? So we got now pretty centered. So we got like a fat guy thumb. Oh, it's starting to rain. Fat guy thumb on the one side. Eh, a little bit less, but you know what? We're going to say that's probably because of something else I didn't do. So that's on there. We can probably push this. Wow. All the windows down are in the car. Awesome. Now it's raining like a lot. Windows are down, windows are down, seats are out. Yeah, we'll deal with that later. Um, so there you go, front suspension. Hopefully you guys learned something from that. I've never done that. I didn't, there was no videos on front suspension on a Chevy 2. Lots of uh, 68 to 74 stuff, but nothing on the 63 to, I, I assume seven. I know there's all sorts of guys that do like church boys racing and, and stuff like that. But they do like a whole tube kind of front end and tubular control arms and like uh, rack and pinion. <clears throat> Seems like it's a whole business on these first generation, you know, Nova deals, but uh, eh, this would be fine. It looks cool. I dig this car actually. You know, now, now that I'm working on it again, I think it's kind of neat. I know people think it's a pile, but I'm into it. So next video, we're going to tackle these, uh, well, just the one quarter and I think inner structure probably needs a little bit of love put the bumper back on put a fuel tank in oh i'm now an expert at metal shaping just so you know so this started out as a flat piece of metal what oh yeah japan signed it and brent xo xo half-ass customs but uh so there we have it 
just gonna push it ahead a little bit. Obviously no fuel tank in, we can't do much. I did cut the fuel line and the brake line, I think when I was putting the floors in, so that wasn't the smartest thing to do. But it's the way it went. I'll probably put it ahead and jack it up in the air as high as I can, because underneath, I don't think I seam sealed the floors or undercoat or any of that stuff. I actually know I didn't. So we can get that all kind of tackled. Next video is gonna be an under the car video, which sucks, but it is what it is. We check the brakes, check the shocks, check all the bushings back there, whatever we gotta do put it back together, then realistically, you're still waiting on the stupid seal for the window, but it should be drivable. Order all the parts for the front, bolt seats in. What else could a guy need? Thank you very much for watching. Leave a comment below if you don't mind. I gotta go, and this is why I can't have nice things. The brand new seats just getting absolutely ruined. But uh, anyways, let me know what you think about that in the comments. Subscribe below, all those good things. See you in a couple days when we're wrenching on more junk. Probably be this, but I might change my mind tomorrow. That's how it works around here.